and welcome to my YouTube video. Today I'm going to be painting this lovely little King Charles Cavalier Spaniel and I thought I'd talk about the top mistakes that I think beginner artists make when they start out. And I'm also going to discuss briefly how you can fix these as well. So I think that the first mistake that they can make is not to work on the entire painting all in one go. So whether you're you're doing it a la prima or you're painting in layers, and this is how I paint, I paint in layers, you need to work on the painting as a whole um, rather than sort of trying to do a section, completing that section and moving on. So the reason why you need to do this is because Temperature and tone are affected by what you see next to it. So if you sort of leave an area untouched, what it will do is it will throw out how you view this painting. So what will happen is that you'll end up spending much longer at the easel because as, as you finish one area and then when you move on to the next area, it's just going to completely throw it out. And then what you'll have to do is you'll have to go back and you'll have to redo the area that you just did. So you'll, you'll be like on this constant loop of redoing a painting and, and it takes much, much longer that way. So that is probably the first mistake. So the second mistake is probably putting the paint on too thick to start with. I mean, sometimes people like, you know, they, they really trowel it on. And, and the problem is with doing this is it doesn't really give you many options if you make a mistake because trying to rectify it is going to be an absolute nightmare. So if you're working a la prima, what you really need to do is you need to build up your areas with thin paint to start with. So almost like you're scumming the area with your brush. You know, it, it can be very patchy. That doesn't matter at all. But it's just you trying to figure out what your tones are and what your temperatures are. And then as you begin to resolve each area, you can then start to build up the painting with thicker paint. So if you're working in layers like I do, you have to be really disciplined. So even if the area that you've done is not correct, what you need to do is you need to just move on, leave it because you can have another attempt on the next layer to, to get it right. So it's not such a big deal if you get it wrong. So at this point, I just thought I'd throw in a little bit of a story. When I was a youngster at school a, a very long time ago, um, I had a history teacher and she, she was very, very militant. And she absolutely drilled us on how to answer um, exam questions. So we'd have to do four essays in three hours. And she was like, 45 minutes per question and then move on. Because if you don't, what you'll lose by not moving on will be huge compared to what you'd gain by spending a bit longer on another question. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like it's the same principle. You must be really disciplined and just move on even if it's not correct because the result of not moving on is a much less fresh painting that's maybe overworked and where the paint has gone muddy. So the next mistake that I think uh, maybe um, beginning painters make is probably using too much white paint or using too much black paint. So I guess why people do this, I get it that they think, oh, I need to lighten this, so I'll just add white, or I need to darken this, so I'll just add black. But the problem with doing that is by adding black and white, you're actually affecting the temperature of your paint. So you are always cooling down your paint. So if you have a painting that is all cool in temperature, what you actually end up with is a very chalky looking picture. Interestingly enough, if you have too much warm temperature in a picture, it can make it look muddy. So you have to be very careful that you control the, the temperature of what you're looking at by adding chroma. So for example, 
If you're adding black and white to your paint mix, you need to make sure that you add chroma to warm it up, such as using yellow or red. Interestingly, using too much colour can result in a painting that looks very unrealistic and quite disjointed. So a way to combat that is to, you, to limit your palette to your three primary colours plus black and white. So another mistake that I think is made is using too small a brush to start with. So don't get lost in detail with a small brush. I was always taught to use a bigger brush than I felt comfortable with to start with. And then as I moved through the layers, I would refine and get to a smaller brush for the detailed areas. So the fifth mistake I think that artists make is using too much solvent, whether this is terps or um, linseed oil. So if you're painting a la prima, this can be an absolute nightmare. So using too much solvent will just result in you completely losing control of your painting and you just you won't be able to do anything with it. Doing this if you paint in layers, I mean, it's not as bad because you can always wait for your, your layer to dry before you have another go at it. But it makes it much harder to pull back because the layer underneath has probably gone very muddy. Um, you know, so it, it, it's lost its freshness. So it becomes quite difficult then to pull the painting back. So the sixth mistake is you must remember your edges, guys. So... Hard edges tell you that an object is up close and soft edges tell you that it's further away. So really, really, really blurry edges, you know, it's, it's miles away in the distance. So these are really important that you have to resolve all your edges and take them into consideration. And if you're working from a reference photo, very often that these are, they're over over sharpened so everything has a hard edge and and this is a massive giveaway when somebody has worked from a photograph so just remember to pick your central point of interest and then make everything else sort of loose and blurry around it so number seven knowing when to stop so fiddling is one of those terrible terrible habits that you really have to get control of so, so we've actually gone back to that history lesson again and being disciplined and i have to confess that fiddling is one of my worst habits in fact that is why i started painting in layers because my fiddling issues were just out of control and i ruined many a good painting by fiddling with it and just completely losing it. So be disciplined and know when to stop. And finally, I think it's quite important that you remember that not every painting you do is gonna be a winner. And sometimes that the learning process is actually more important than the actual painting itself. So don't be too hard on yourself if you're not happy with what you produce and you end up repurposing your canvas and using it again because the lesson that you will have learned will be really important for helping you with your next painting. So I hope that you've enjoyed my YouTube video today and um, please subscribe to my channel because I try and post every week and I'll see you for the next one.